Okay, hi everybody, we're back. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, TCP connections in more depth than we have ever looked at before. And I've got a special uh, something for you today and that is we're not going to be using localhost to communicate. So I've actually done something kind of uh, crazy to begin with here and I'll kind of describe this. We're actually looking at two different computers at this point. So this side is a computer that is user VNC user and it's at DRBL server. That's at one computer and on this side I have a computer uh, user C28 at client. And actually you can even see the IP address of this client here. 192.168.2.8 because the host name has actually got the IP address in it. Now, I've actually issued a command called netstat and um, right now there, is, there are no connections uh, with the term Python in it. And I'll, I'll tell you what netstat does. Next, net, netstat actually prints out network connections and on a computer in, in Unix or Linux and the P, I think, will um, print out the uh, process. And the A is for all. The N means it will not resolve host names, so it'll leave them as IPs. And T stands for TCP connections. And I'm, and I'm piping that to grep just simply to only get uh, stuff that is started by Python and no other TCP connections, because obviously there, are, there will be others that we don't want to look at. So. Um, here I have a program here. I've kind of taken out all the comments just so that you could see the code more clearly and at this point I don't think I need to go over the comments again because we've done that in previous uh, lessons. However, I am doing something different here and that is I'm going to be using this computer here although this might seem slightly odd I'm going to be using C28 as the server. So if you'll notice here, uh, I'm running the server on this computer. So just to be clear, these two left-hand terminals are on a different computer than these two right compute that, than the two right-hand terminals. Okay. Um, so let's go through the code here for a minute and let's take a look here. I am using something interesting. I'm using os.getpid right there. So I actually want to know the process ID. Okay, of the server uh, running Python, this program. So this, so this print line will actually let me see the, the process ID of this Python program. So then I create the socket and I allow myself to reuse the socket. I don't have to wait. And the, the host and the port are command line arguments. I'm going to bind to that port and then listen on it. By the way, in Python uh, 3. Point, since I think 3.5, this uh, argument as to the number of connections that can be pending. So, for example, if this is you know if this is a server, you could you might have multiple computers trying to connect to it. You could, this is actually optional now. You don't have to put a one in there uh, or a higher integer. You can leave it blank. But listen is simply going to mean that we will accept connections on that port that we're binding to. So again, if I draw a picture of what's happening here, um, I want you to understand that I've got two computers, okay? Here is one computer, and then here is the other computer. And I'll, I'll do it, this is the server side and this is the client side. So same side as, um, so here is my Python program and here is going to be the port that I'm listening on. That's the port, okay? And then this is going to be my socket, okay? My socket resides uh, in the Python program. And when I bind and listen, I'm actually doing that. I'm kind of connecting that port with that socket. 
Okay, so um, going back to my code, right? That's what's happening on line uh, 10 and 11. So let's let's run this side and let's see what happens. Ready? So let's go Python 3 and TCP and let's now okay now remember here this is this is going to be interesting um, I'm not going to use localhost here because I actually really want to do uh, network programming actually through the physical network so localhost is only internal so th this is actually two different machines we're looking at here I've managed to fandangle that in one screen so therefore, I actually, I'm going to type in 0, 0, 0, 0, and that's actually going to bind to uh, my actual network card on the server side, OK? Um, it, by the way, if you have more than one network card, you could actually specify the address here of the network card uh, that you want. And maybe we'll try that later. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick port 5555. Okay, now I'm going to start this. Now, now what, what, what happened here is I know the PID of this, pro, of this Python process. It's 2,703. And I have a, 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 something printed here. Um, my, my socket is printed. And that's line 12. I'm printing S. Okay, notice this socket has file descriptor 3. So what's a file descriptor? OK, let's go back to the, um, the drawing. So this Python program here, OK, this Python program uh, has file descriptors. And file descriptor 0 is, now this is actually standard for all Unix uh, situations. Oops, didn't mean to draw that. So file descriptor 0 stands for uh, standard input. File descriptor 1, these are integers, uh, stands for standard output. And 2 stands for standard error. Okay? Those are the, these file descriptors exist for all programs. So where would input come from? Well, input could come from uh, the keyboard. That's standard input. OK, standard output, that's the screen. When you print stuff, it goes to standard output. And when you have errors generated, that goes to standard uh, output too. And that's usually the screen as well, although it can be redirected. OK, so therefore, the first three, 0, 1, 2 are now currently being used by this Python process. And so therefore, when it requires another file descriptor, it's going to make a third one. And now that one, if you look here, that's used by this socket. So these file descriptors are a way, remember in Unix and Linux, everything is a file. So these files are a way for this program to communicate with the outside world. Mm -hmm. And so file descriptor number three is this socket that we've created here that is listening. So therefore, if we go back to the picture, this is this socket here. OK? And it's it's listening socket. And it's, it's bound to this port uh, 55555. And so let's now go back to our code and Let's now actually uh, get go to another terminal. Okay, so here is another terminal, and let's do that netstat pant, and let's grep Python. And now you'll see. Actually, let's perhaps make this a little bit smaller so we can have it on one line. Oops, no, I should have done it again. A uh, little bit smaller. That's too small now. That's too small to see. Uh, okay, that's not bad. 
That's good enough. I hope that's visible in the video. So you'll see here that it says Python there, but that's the PID. Notice it says this socket is now listening. And notice that here's the, the IP and the port. Okay, And this here is the foreign um, address that it's connected to. And guess what? It's not, it's not a connected socket at this point. Okay, So at this point, let's move over to the client machine. And let's run the client uh, software. And so this is actually a physically different machine I'm on now. Uh, this is brought to you with the magic of VNC. And so I'm now going to go Python 3. And now I'm going to go T TCP send 3. No comments, because that's this file here. And then I'm going to have to st uh, type in the IP address that I'd like to connect to, which I know is right here, 192.168.2-8. So 192.168. Uh, dot two dot eight, and then the port five 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 five. And now I'm going to hit enter. Now, once I hit enter, notice what happened here. Okay, um, stuff printed out, although we didn't see that happen because I hadn't switched to it. So, notice this is what printed before, but now something else printed here. This is new. And so at this point, um, we, were, we were blocking on line 14 before, before we connected. But as soon as we connected, OK, as soon as we went s.connect to the host and port I specified on the command line, then line 14 returned. And what prints out? The connection. So now let's pause for a minute and see what, what happened on line 14. This is actually really interesting. Because line four dot ex, s dot accept actually returns, and here is the most important thing that I really want you to take away from this lesson. Line fourteen right here. When that returns, it returns a new socket. Con. You know why? Because when I print con. This is line 15 you're seeing right here. That, when I've, what I've highlighted right now, is line 15 on the server side. Wait a minute. This is a new file descriptor. This is a new socket. Let's update our drawing. So let's go back. Ha ha. So now, that means that I have a new socket, and so we've got to draw a new socket here. There it is. It's connected to this Python program. And this one is called con, and it's a socket. OK? So now wait a minute. Oh, and by the way, that's file descriptor 4. That's also. OK, so this is now the established. This one's the listening socket. This one's the one that listens. And this one is the one that is established. Thank goodness I can spell. So now this is, this is that one. OK, it's here. So where is that one now? If it's connected, where the heck is it connected to? Well, look at this. It's actually connected like this. Okay, so maybe maybe we don't make this one open. Maybe we'll just make those ports <laughs> look like a block there. And now here is the client Python program. And this one has a socket. Okay. And this socket now was created on let me show you. On the client side, it was created here on line 9. Okay, S.connect. 
So it connects to host and port. As soon as this connects, this returns, and now we have an established connection. How can I prove to you that it is established? Well, the reason why it's established is because it has both a local endpoint and a remote endpoint. So another, let's take a look at the remote endpoint from the server side. That's port 46,894. Let's go back to our image. That means this port is 46,800 and, did I get that right? 46,894? Yeah, that's right. I'm looking right here. And, by the way, my IP address here is uh, on, the, on, the, on the client side. That's re Notice it says remote. So this is on my client side. So now watch this here. Ready? Look, I can go file new tab here and then watch what I'm going to do. I'll do the same thing. Netstat pant grep python. There it is. Now this is established. Notice that um, th th this is the local network connection, this is the local port, and this is the remote IP address and the remote port. And it says it's established. This is on the client side, it says it's established. Let's go take a look on the server side, what it says. Ready? Boom. Now we've got, wait, now we've got two ports associated with Python. This is still listening. This port is still listening, but look at this. The, this is now the local side. So that's our local IP address. That's our local port. And on the remote side, there's the remote IP uh, address and the, the remote port. Can you see how they're mirrors of each other? So this is running on the client side. On the right-hand side, this is the server side. Look carefully at how the connection is established. And if we go to the picture, Okay, oops, wrong one. Here, there it is. Okay, so this, this, goes, this goes like, uh, I didn't really draw that well, but essentially this connects through there and there's a connection now from this guy here all the way to this guy here. Okay, notice that we are still listening though on this port 55555. There's, an, there's, two, there's two sockets connected to this port. Okay? This one's the listening one, and this one is the established one. You guys with me? So, now let's go back to the code. Hopefully this is making sense. Let's go back to the, oops, no, wrong one. Yeah, here we go. Uh oh. There we go. Okay, we got everything back. Um, so now what's next? Well, let's go back over here. And now what's happening? Uh, okay, the next thing that's happening is after we've accepted, we go into this while true loop. And now we ask for keyboard input. The server side says, hey, what do you want to send? Now, in this case, the way I've set up the code, I've set it up such that the server is going to send something first after the connection is established. So this is the nice thing about TCP. Once that connection is established, we can send information back and forth, back and forth, and the, we don't have to recreate any, we don't, we don't need to say where it's going anymore because that, connect, that connection with TCP is made. We can't do this with UDP. With UDP, every time you want to send data, you have to say where it's going to go. You, it's connection less, okay? Whereas the T, TCP, ha, you can actually create connections and then once it's established, you can send data back and forth as you desire. So, okay, let's type something. Hello, enter. Now, notice as soon as I hit enter, uh, reply 
this stops block. Line 17 stops blocking. That's keyboard blocking. And then now we're doing send all. Why am I doing send all? Because in previous examples, I used send. But I mean, if the, if the number of bytes is very small, it's probably going to send it all together. But it doesn't necessarily have to. By the way, there's something else I'd like to mention with TCP, and that is the data, according to the network, doesn't have to all be sent in order, but when it's re um, when it's like recreated on the other side, the order is actually figured out. So you don't have to do that as the programmer. So um, the, the nice thing about the TCP is that it, it'll, whatever you sent will get there in the correct order. So if you said hello, it'll be H-E-L-L-O uh, uh, correctly on the other side. However, if we don't do send all, which we did, by the way, on line 18 here, I mean, hello is a quite a short uh, string. If, if we sent, like, for example, a, um, like a textbook, if we sent a lot of data, then if we had just used send, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's all going to get there. We would have to keep calling send until all the data has been exhausted. But send all does that for us. OK, so send all is nice that way. And I'm taking reply, and I'm encoding it into UTF-8 by default, because uh, it has to be a, a binary object that we're sending, because that's what the other side's going to ex expect. And so here, the first thing we're doing inside this while true loop here is we're receiving. We're receiving and by the way, we can receive up to 1024 bytes here on the receive line on line 12. Uh, we don't have to necessarily receive that many bytes. We can receive up to that many bytes. But again, um, you, you'd have to uh, call it again if you didn't get everything. So, uh, but if you use send all, then you don't need to worry about it. Okay? So at this point, um, now we're going to decode the data and we're going to print it. Okay, and there it is. It says hello. Okay. And so now we go the the it, when we decode the data, it doesn't say buy. So therefore it's not going to break. So now the now look what happens. Now the client side says, "Hey, send something." So now this side's and now we'll say uh, something back. We'll say something like um, how are you? Question mark. So now we're, we're blocking on line 17. On the, on the server side, we're actually blocking on uh, con.receive. Ready? So now I'm going to hit enter. And now it's a client says, how are you? And so now um, we printed that. And then we go back up to the while true. And now we're at input and we're at send again. So this is kind of like round robin communication. In other words, it's not asynchronous communication in that we have to take turns communicating. So one side has to send and then the other side has to send. So it kind of flip flops back and forth. And um, when we learn, now there's various ways to actually extend this and actually have asynchronous communication. But it's but we have single threads here and we're we're essentially doing things in two while true loops and and we can break it and, and let me show you how we're going to break it so notice here um, it says server ended call so in order for the server to end the call the reply has to be bye so now if I say bye oops and I hit enter um, it sends the buy, okay, and 
so the, it, we sent the buy, and it sh we should break out of this now. And why didn't it break? Did I put a space in the front there? Um, oh, no, no, no. OK, so this guy has to, OK, so this guy still, we've received it. And now what are we doing here? Um, print if data decode equals buy. Server replies buy. I think I put a space in front of there. Let's try it again. Let's send something back. Let's go. Um, uh, are you done? And now we'll say buy. Did I put a space? No. Okay, no space. There we go. That seems odd. Uh, it finished this time, so not sure why it didn't. Not sure why it didn't work. Maybe I put a space after the buy. Okay, so now let's go back after we stop the. After we've stopped the, we sent buy and we we both both programs have now quit. Let's go and take a look at, um, and so notice there's no connections anymore. Okay? Um, let's try this again. So let's try this again, but this time, instead of specifying 0, 0, 0, let's actually be explicit to the network IP address on our, uh, our network card that we'd like to bind to. So let's try it again on this side. Oops, not this terminal, but let's go to this one. And so now I'm going to type in uh, 192.168.2.8. Now, that is my, by the way, okay, so if you're wondering here, uh, I can go IP ADDR show, and uh, if I scroll up a little bit, well, there it is. Actually, you can see it. INET, my internet address here is that one. Okay? 192.168.28. And so, um, if I run this, oops, no, that, all right, now if I hit enter, okay, now you can see my local address. So I didn't have to, so 000, zero, zero will bind to any uh, local network card. So it's like any IP. But in this case, I'm specifying explicitly. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, listen, for example, what if your computer has a, like more than one network card and your computer is connected to more than one network? That's possible. It could be a gateway, for example, and you want to communicate uh, to one side of that network and not the other. Then you could specify the IP address uh, explicitly instead of zero, zero. So now if I now come back here and I could do the same thing and now if I hit enter here it's the same thing is gonna work now it's gonna work exactly the same way okay so now I can send from the server there you go Okay, and then, and we're done. Okay? Okay, well, I hope this has been uh, worthwhile for you, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.